Goku over time has grown as a character, and his morality has altered and grown along with him. The way he treats antagonists and the villains that face him is the clearest way to see this. Most think of Goku as being strictly merciful, never changing in his belief that enemies can be redeemed and become rivals. But this isn't the case at all. Goku was prepared and did kill the Demon King Piccolo and his offspring without a worry, but things start to change when we get to the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai. As we all know, Goku defeats the reincarnated Demon King, but despite this being the same villain he faced three years earlier, he can't bring himself to kill him. However, this isn't guised as mercy. Goku initially leaves him alive because he wants to win the tournament, so no killing allowed. The second reason is because Goku realized that Kami would die along with Piccolo, which would also result in the disappearance of the Dragon Balls. This was something that Kami had been lying about. The third reason is one that everyone uses to call Goku selfish. Goku wants Piccolo to get stronger and become his rival. Goku wasn't fully convinced by this action that Mercy was the right action. The looming threat did keep Goku in shape, and Piccolo not attacking in the five years after the tournament were all good signs that his actions were justified. But Raditz would show a further challenge. How do you face someone stronger than you that refuses mercy? Raditz was obviously far beyond the power of Piccolo and Goku individually, but combined, their might and tactical ability would be enough to stop him. At one point, Goku used his own knowledge of his Saiyan anatomy to immobilize Raditz by grabbing his tail. This would have resulted in a casualty-free victory, but we know that Goku lets Raditz go. Convinced that his estranged brother will leave the planet and never return to Earth again. That wasn't the only reason for Goku's resolve to be merciful though. Goku was flat out rejecting the nature of the Saiyans that Raditz had claimed Goku was a part of. Goku wanted to prove that he was different, but as we know, this fails. Raditz's plea for mercy was a ploy of course. He had no intentions of leaving the planet or changing his ways. Luckily, Gohan weakened Raditz enough that Goku got a second chance to end Raditz but this time it would cost Goku his own life as well. Raditz was unlike Piccolo in the sense that he seemed to be an insurmountable wall. Scaring Raditz into redemption wouldn't work because the minute Goku let go of his tail, Raditz would just return to being an indomitable force. He has no reason to actually change his ways. This should have been a lesson to Goku. His philosophy of sparing everyone was directly challenged and shown to be flawed but Raditz still died and it didn't cost anyone's life besides his own. There was no reason to learn something here in the eyes of Goku. He would have a year to reflect on how to handle threats going forward, but the solution was still the same. A year later, the Saiyans, Nappa and Vegeta, arrive, and Goku is determined in this fight not to kill despite what the two had done to his friends. He quickly cripples Nappa, allowing him to live, but never letting the irredeemable monster fight again. Goku thinks this would be enough to motivate Vegeta to leave the planet, but the opposite happens. Whereas Goku was being merciful, seeking a resolution that requires no death, Vegeta thought life was unimportant. The weak have no reason to live, those who can't fight shouldn't slow down those who can. So without hesitation, Vegeta ends Nappa's life. Vegeta and Goku differ on many ideologies. Goku is the hard-working, low-class warrior that believes in mercy for the weak. Vegeta is the natural-born, super-elite prince that believes the weak don't deserve to live. These two are fundamentally different, and so their battle is not only to prove who's stronger, but also to prove their philosophies. This is why when Krillin has the chance to kill Vegeta, Goku tells him not to. If Goku was truly to win this battle, to truly prove what he believes in, he can't be even indirectly responsible for the death of Vegeta. Goku continued down this road of mercy even on Namek. He showed mercy to the Ginyu Force, a mercy that Vegeta didn't reciprocate just like on Earth. Goku still held to his beliefs though. This road eventually led him to the person King Kai called the Root of Evil, Frieza. Where Piccolo and Vegeta seemed to vindicate Goku's beliefs with some of their actions, he would face a wall of true evil that couldn't be redeemed. Frieza was unlike anyone he'd faced before. 
having a superiority complex that makes Vegeta look humble and ignoring reality to the point that he's willfully ignorant. Frieza could never be handled the same way Vegeta and Piccolo were. However, Goku, still vindicated in his morality, would try. When Goku becomes a Super Saiyan, he utterly humiliates Frieza. Goku's power is just beyond Frieza's, and Goku hopes that humiliation will be a lesson to Frieza, a lesson he needs to stop his evil ways once and for all. But we all know it doesn't work. Frieza retaliates against the now retreating Goku, which just angers Goku even more. He gave Frieza a chance, he humiliated Frieza, but still, Frieza chose to attack rather than leave with his life. After Frieza is dismembered by his own attack, Goku gives Frieza one last chance to go on living. He shares his energy with the pleading tyrant and tells him to never show his face again. Once again, Frieza is given the chance to escape and continue living. And once again, Frieza's arrogance and willful ignorance have him throwing that chance away. Just like Raditz, Frieza was beyond redemption. Frieza was beyond saving. Goku fires a Ki Blast back at Frieza, ending him once and for all. The anime messed up this scene, but when Goku looks down at where Frieza once was, his arm that blasted the Galactic Tyrant still trembling on its descent, he's sad, not angry. He couldn't save this one. Another life had to be ended for the greater good. Not everyone can be redeemed. The disheartened Goku now had some thinking to do. He'd have two years to reconcile his morality. How would he handle future threats after he made such a misjudgment this time? The Android and Cell arcs are a bit weird when it comes to people's perceptions of Goku as a character. Some may say that Goku learned nothing from Frieza. Goku admits that Frieza surviving was probably because he was too soft but then goes on to let the androids be created over the three years instead of destroying them and Jiro preemptively. This isn't right though. On Namek, Goku thought he did kill Frieza. He realizes after the fact that he was too soft on him when he senses Frieza approaching Earth in his own spaceship. This isn't an admission of guilt in any way. Then, with the androids and Jiro, Goku actually doesn't just say he wants to fight the androids. He says, and I quote, he hasn't made anything yet, so it's not nice to just beat him up. Goku isn't justifying this by saying he wants to just have fun with a fight. He's actually justifying it by not going after a thought crime. For all they know, three years could pass and the androids just don't show up at all. They are taking Trunks' word at this point with no actual evidence. However, this is still very much how Goku's moral compass pushes him. He's always responded more harshly to actions done in front of him rather than what he's told. Seeing Krillin and Vegeta die to Frieza was far more painful to Goku than hearing about the people he's killed in the past. Still, Goku's mentality is to destroy the androids at all costs, but he's unable to act on that desire due to the heart virus. That is, until the Cell Games. The Cell Games are an interesting time, because Goku is fully aware of the fact that he can't defeat Cell. Even going back into the Room of Spirit and Time seems like it wouldn't actually be enough for Goku to surpass Cell, or so he thinks at least. Goku's desire to defeat Cell was in conflict with another desire, to strengthen the next generation. The only way to reconcile these feelings was to make the next generation strong enough to kill Cell, make Gohan strong enough to kill Cell. Goku giving Cell a Senzu Bean is just to reinforce the fact that Gohan is far more powerful than Cell himself, and his pride as a warrior makes him want a fair fight. The issues arise when Goku realizes he didn't understand Gohan's real feelings. Gohan would have preferred he fought a weaker Cell. Gohan would have preferred Goku defeated Cell. Gohan would have preferred that he didn't fight at all. Goku thought he was good at reading others and understanding their feelings. But after his failure to do so with Frieza, and now with Gohan, he knows he has work to do. That's the only real lesson he learns here though. Gohan still turns Super Saiyan 2 and gets a rage boost, proving Goku right about his power. 
Then Cell self-destructs, resulting in the death of Goku. However, Cell surviving this and still requiring Gohan to beat him reinforces the idea that the next generation has to take over. Finally, Goku's last revelation of the Cell arc is that the villains of the last few years only threatened Earth because of him. The Saiyans, Frieza, Jiro, the androids, and Cell were all a result of Goku. He finally understands this and chooses to stay dead. Goku sees Gohan as a more reliable person, so he entrusts the safety of Earth and everyone to him. This wraps up neatly, but Goku being right is only a limited time prospect. A seven year time skip happens and we enter the Boo arc. As a threat to Earth, Boo was far different than any other previously. He wasn't someone seeking revenge on Goku. Boo was a manifestation of mortal evil. This entity became Majin Buu when Bibbidi controlled him. Majin Buu was separate from Goku in every way possible. Him being sealed on Earth was simply a coincidence, and Goku's one day on Earth being the day that Babidi attacks was also a coincidence. Early in the arc, Goku is constantly putting the threat ahead of himself, like when he puts off the tournament to stop Buu from being revived. Even things like saying that he's going all out against Majin Vegeta, whose defeat would mean that Boo doesn't emerge, makes perfect sense under Goku's new morality. However, as there was for the Cell arc, there's a conflict here as well. Goku is still obsessed with the next generation. He could have solved this conflict early with Super Saiyan 3, either using it to defeat Majin Vegeta or against Fat Boo. But he didn't think he'd ever come back to Earth again, and so he wanted the next generation to be ready for future threats. The narrative of the Boo arc isn't really focused on Goku. It constantly shifts protagonists to show that no one person can defeat Boo, and it requires teamwork to actually win, something that Goku doesn't learn until Vegeta flat out tells him. Goku was so focused on the next generation, he forgot that he had a technique that could use the power of everyone showing Boo the strength and resolve of humanity in the most literal way possible. The final resolution being that Goku comes full circle, realizing he wants to fight Boo again one day, but without the risk of him being evil. So, instead of sparing Boo, Goku asks that he be reincarnated as a good person. And so, Boo comes to be. This is basically where Goku's morality arc ends. In Super, Goku treats Frieza as a permanent threat, having learned his lesson from their first encounter. Even when Frieza is promised resurrection after the Tournament of Power, both Goku and Frieza know that's a lie. Frieza is even ready to return to Hell after it's all done. It's actually Beerus who's responsible for Frieza's revival to the clear shock of Goku and everyone else present. Goku Black and Zamas are never treated as being redeemable, and Goku is constantly fighting alongside Vegeta and Trunks after learning that one of them wouldn't be enough. Then, Jiren just reinforces the teamwork and trust ideology Goku learned in the Boo arc. And finally, Broly simply shows how much better Goku is at reading people now. He knows quickly that Broly isn't evil and constantly wants Broly to stop fighting, which would be at the cost of Goku's own self-interest really going against the selfish characterization that people portray. Speaking of selfishness, a few years pass until the end of Z takes place. Since Muro isn't over, we can't judge that yet. During the end of Z, Goku is obsessed with what has become of the now reincarnated Majin Buu. As a good person, what will Buu hold for Goku? Put simply, Oob isn't a threat. Oob is someone he can enjoy training and fighting with. Oob requires no moral judgment. He's the retirement that Goku gets at the end of his journey. To Goku, Oob is the embodiment of his moral resolution. Mercy without risk. The incarnation of the merciful Saiyan's ideology. <laughs>